So Juneteenth, um, in the same vein as sort of New Year's Eve, if you will, feels like uh, a moment of pause. For Sierra Buckner with the Mitchell Hamlin School of Law, Juneteenth is a time to reflect. It feels like a time to um, come together with other black folks, to come together with your own self um, as a black person and really reflect on uh, sort of not only what's happened in the last 400 years, but what has happened in the last year. Juneteenth is an annual holiday celebrating the day the last slaves in this country found out they were free. Two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation in 1862. We know that majority of the states have recognized that there was one state that held out. Following George Floyd's murder at the hands of a Minneapolis police officer last year and several other police shootings that sparked nationwide protest, Husnia Bradley says they decided this year to start a Juneteenth week panel to discuss several topics, including reparations. And so we came up with a week of activities to do. We had you know several different um, panel discussions. In January, the city of St. Paul apologized for its role in institutional racism and formed a committee to consider offering reparations for slavery. But while there is still a long way to go for justice. We deserve um, a sort of equality that goes beyond just, uh, just beyond symbolism, beyond um, messaging, beyond uh, the significance of a day off, right? Because it's, not, it's, it's a day off for everyone now. They're urging people to look to the past and the future to spark change. To leave white supremacy in the background and really just think about blackness, black community, breaking bread, being with each other. In St. Paul, Charmaine Nero, CARE 11 News. The group will be holding a rally and march to the governor's mansion with other organizations at 6 o'clock tonight. To find out more about upcoming Juneteenth events across the metro area, just visit our website at care11.com.